Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 5 on the subject of adjectives and we are now at the halfway practice stage. So we're going to be looking at these three examples uh, which uh, demonstrate the attributive and predicative use of the adjective that we've considered so far. All the answers in the back, of course, but I've picked here three of the more tricky ones. This one in particular is somewhat, well, not tricky, but it's just got some useful bits and pieces in it, which, if we can remember, actually it will help you uh, further down the road when, when things get a bit more complicated. But um, we'll just kick straight off, take a look at number nine. Here goes, a wicked crowd seeks signs. wonder who might have said that. A wicked crowd seeks signs. Okay, where's the verb? Let's always start with the verb, if there is one. And there it is. Uh, and the verb... To seek is zeteo, zeteo, which conjugates as zeto, zetes, zete, zetumen, zetete, zetusin. Just keep rolling around those in your mind every time you uh, come across a verb. Well, not every time, but just do it occasionally and it will keep refreshing things. Uh, notice here we want the third person singular, not the third person plural, because in this instance a crowd, though denoting uh, a plurality of people, is a singular entity denoting a plurality of people, rather like um, the, the way in which the word laos, a people, is used. And we talk about um, a people seeks a sign, or a crowd seeks signs. So we want zerto, zertes, zerte, zerte, seeks, it seeks. So you've done the verb, now translate the subject. Well, the subject is a wicked crowd. Let's do the noun first. Do the noun before the adjective. Just makes it a bit easier. It wants to be in the nominative singular, and that is ochlos. Ochlos. And then our wicked, well, we don't need the article. We just need the adjective, wicked. And that can go before or after ochlos. But let's pop it before because it's just the same as in English and there's no problem with it. And the word for wicked is... Poneros. Incidentally, if you need a mnemonic to remember that Poneros is wicked, then I think there's something wrong with you. The name enough is enough. Surely the word Poneros just sounds wicked or evil, doesn't it? Okay, a wicked crowd seeks, and then we want signs. Uh, the word for a sign in Greek is Semeon. Semeon. It's a neuter noun. But we want a neuter plural noun, and it wants to be in the accusative case because it's the object of the verb. So semeon, semeon, semeu, semeo, semea, semea, accusative plural. So semea. Remember, of course, that uh, the nominative and the accusative are the same in neuter nouns. So there we are. Poneros, ochlos, zerte, semea. A wicked crowd seeks signs. That's number nine. Okay, let's take a look now at number ten. Is God dead? Is God dead? Bit trickier this one because we've got a question mark, but as I've mentioned before, if you have a question mark, uh, the way to translate it most simply is just to translate it as a statement and then at this stage just slap the question mark in again afterwards. Later on we will come to some subtleties about different kinds of questions that you can ask in Greek, but at this stage just slap the question mark in and a statement magically becomes a question. So is God dead? Let's find the verb first. The verb is is and it's third person singular of he is, of I am, I am, you are, he is, Amy, a Estin. So let's pop that in. Oh dear, what is in the right order? Estin. Amy A. Estin. Esmen este asin. This is the third person singular, meaning he is. So that's the verb. Next, you want the subject, and the subject is God. God is the noun, which is the subject of the verb. He's the one who is being uh, dead in the statement. God is dead. And of course, we want hotheos. Hotheos, because not just theos, um, because generally, generally, the definite article is used with proper names in Greek, hot Jesus, hot theos, and so on. So, God is, and then the rest of the sentence, dead. So this is the adjective, nekros, nekros, and it needs to match in number and gender with hotheos, and it also needs to match in case, because Estin does not take an object in the accusative. It takes a, thank you very much, it takes a complement in the nominative. So, hotheos 
Estin Necros. Uh, I remember the row, Necros. God is dead, and then we want to turn it finally into a question by putting a question mark at the end of the sentence. So, Hotheos Estin Necros, is God dead? That's number 10. Okay, and now here's the third example, just clean the whiteboard off to give us a bit more space, which we might need for this one. Number 11, we are departing to our own houses. Just a couple of uh, uh, complexities here, which it's worth uh, uh, drawing to your attention and we'll spot them as we work our way through. But first, let's just find the verb. Here's the verb, we are departing. And we are departing, what comes from the verb I depart, which is ago. Nice little mnemonic for that one. I am departing, up and go, hoop go. But we want, we are departing, so hoop I go, hoop I gays, hoop I gay, hoop I gomen. That means we are departing. So that's the verb. The subject, well, there's no extra subject because the subject is simply we and it's included within the verb. So what's left in the sentence? Well, there's no object. What there is instead is our old friend, the prepositional phrase. To our own houses. So let's just work through this one step at a time. First, the preposition itself. The word to can be translated into Greek as pros or ace. And there is a difference in emphasis in many contexts between these two words, pros or ace. Pros is to in the sense of towards, um, and ace is to in the sense of going into. Um, but it's possible, just about, that somebody who's saying we're departing to our own houses could want to lean a little bit more on the pros side, you know, heading in the direction of our houses, or the ace side, like I'm going home, I'm going to bed, I'm gonna be going inside and upstairs, and not just remaining outside the house, but going into it. Now, obviously, in English, we use the word to, to denote both of those emphases, but in Greek there's a possibility that pros or ace might be used. Don't get too stressed about which one uh, ought to be employed, because either will do just fine. Pros or ace. Fortunately, that doesn't introduce any other complexity into the translation of this sentence, because both pros and ace take a complement in the accusative case. So this little baby, our own houses, wants to be in the accusative. That just raises the next slight complication because what's the Greek word for a house? Well, there are two Greek words that you've learned so far for a house, and you have either uh, oikos, which is a masculine noun, or oikia, which is a feminine noun. And for the sake of completion, we probably ought to do them both. So we'll do these one at a time over here. Let's start, just because it's at the top, with uh, oikos. That then leads us to the final little puzzle. And for some strange reason, people seem to have difficulty working out how to use the word our own. Our own. Now, a bit of looking ahead to the future here, there are other ways of expressing uh, possession or ownership in Greek besides what I'm going to show you, but in this case, um, as you'd expect in the chapter on adjectives, which has a word at the end which is translated one's own, we're going to be using the adjective idios, meaning one's own. And so the question, uh, the question is how do you use this adjective in this case, because if idios means one's own, how do we make it mean our own? It just feels a bit clunky and it's not altogether obvious to work out how to do it. So let me show you how I would try to think about it. When you're trying to put this adjective in a sentence, start by imagining that you're trying to do something else, that you're instead trying to write the good houses. What that then highlights is that you need the article, the, houses remains the same, and idios just goes in here. Let me show you what I mean. 
If you were wanting to start with Oikos, we are departing to the good houses. Well, you'd have to write, and I'm going to put it underneath here, uh, accusative plural, tus, and then everything else agreeing with tus and being accusative plural, agathus, accusative plural, oi, kus, the good houses. If alternatively, instead of using oikos, the masculine form, you were going to use oikia, and it means the same thing, then you'd need feminine accusative plural, feminine accusative plural to match with uh, oi, the feminine accusative plural form of this, oikia, oikian, oikias, oikia, oiki, i, oiki, as, very good, oiki, as, and tas, her ten, tes, ter, hi, tas, tas, and then, of course, we need the adjective to agree in number, case, and gender, agathas, tas, agathas, oikias. So that's how you'd write, we are departing to the good houses. Either tus agathus oikus or tas agathas oikias. Now, here's the clever bit. This is the adjective which is a little bit tricky to use. And the way to think about the phrase, and here's the crucial part, instead of the good houses, just think the one's own houses. The one's own houses. We are departing to the one's own houses is how the sentence works, or at least how it works if you want to make sense of the stru structure that you ought to end up with, which is this. Ideus or ideas. That's the correct uh, form of the sentence, the sentence that you should end up with. We are departing hupagomen, either pros or ace, doesn't matter which, and the one's own houses, tus ideus oikus, or tas ideas oikias. Hopefully that'll help a little bit working out how the syntax of idios works. I know it's a bit tricky, uh, it's certainly counterintuitive, and maybe the problem is partly that this is a bit of a clunky way of um, translating it. It's the belonging to whoever, isn't it, um, uh, house. But anyway, this is what it is. Um, that at least is how the syntax ought to work in this sentence, and it will show you how to make it work in other sentences as well. Okay, good. Well, that's some uh, examples from uh, practice, the halfway practice in chapter five. We're going to keep going in the next video. We'll look at the third and final use of adjectives in this chapter to be used as nouns, which is quite significant, very common, and extremely straightforward. So be sure to check back next time, and we'll do that together in section 5.5. But for now, God bless, take care, see you next time.